selling over 200 homes in the last five years, I have seen some buyers do some pretty silly mistakes. So I'm here to share some of the do's, mostly don'ts, to ensure that you have a successful closing. It's kind of a tales from the street from your not so secret special agent, Summer Dawn Orizetti with Momentum Luxury Real Estate. Do not go and lease a Range Rover after I have explicitly told you not to, and then give me a ring and say, I did a bad thing, don't tell the lender. I don't need to tell the lender. They're going to find out. Do you suppose if you're gonna live in a car, a Range Rover is the way to go though, still advise against it. <laughs> do not go to your job and punch your boss in the face and quit three days before closing. I will not be able to get a letter from your HR department saying that you were laid off. Believe me, I have tried. <laughs> You're really not gonna wanna change employment at all. Don't go self-employed, don't change jobs. If you're offered a position you really don't wanna pass up, just talk to your lender before you make any major decisions. This one, this one should be a no-brainer. Do not spend the money that you have set aside for your closing costs and down payment, period, post-op. If you own another house, just disclose it. Disclose all debts, all liabilities. I know you're thinking like, they'll never know. They will know, they will find out, and hopefully they find out why you're still in your loan contingency so your escrow can be protected. Do not buy furniture on credit for a house we haven't closed on yet. It's not gonna fit in your Range Rover. <laughs> for that matter, just no shopping sprees. You don't want to, on credit cards, you don't wanna open or close any accounts. Uh, you just wanna lay low financially. Don't co-sign a loan for anyone, for anything. Just chill out, pay your bills on time, easy peasy. This one, this one's for my doomsday preppers. Okay. Do not go and dig up that 20K you have buried in the backyard that you've been saving for a rainy day and deposit in your bank account. All funds need to be sourced, okay? They have to be seasoned in your bank account for a minimum of three months. It's a little thing called the Patriot Act and the Cocaine Cowboys. <laughs> So this last thing is not going to affect your closing, but it will save you heaps of stress. I do not recommend scheduling movers for your closing day. There's a bunch of different things that can happen. Your closing date could get pushed out. You could have a late afternoon closing. And I know you're like, well, how is a late afternoon closing going to affect me getting my keys? The seller ultimately is not going to release the keys or possession of the home until they receive their funds. So if for some reason you have to sign later in the afternoon, those documents still have to be scanned, sent to the lender, the lender has to send their funds, and the title company is gonna disperse those funds to everybody, including the seller. So the seller has to receive their sweet, sweet cash before you receive your keys. So I do advise against scheduling movers on closing day. All jokes aside, going under contract for a home is a monumental event. This is a really big deal. It's like having a wedding or having a baby. <laughs> and everybody and their mother is an agent. Family members are gonna be eager to get their opinion to you. Uncle Two Cents who bought a property in the early 2000s is going to tell you everything you can get away with, what should be happening, what shouldn't be happening, what you're doing right, what you're mostly doing wrong. Your family, surely, like they have your best interest in mind, but it's imperative that you reach out to your professionals, consult the people that are here to ultimately protect you and to get you to the closing team. Again, Congratulations, I'm going under contract for a home. Now, don't fudge it up. <laughs>